Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con 2018. I'm here with Doug and his two-tongue porcupine company, as well as Kapow, the game we launched on Kickstarter I got to review. He's going to be talking about a little bit about the game today, Absolutely. so go ahead and tell us what it's about. All right, this is a comic book inspired superhero versus supervillain dice building game, right? So during the game, you're going to be fighting 1v1, superhero versus supervillain. You actually get to build your dice during the game, right? So this is our own proprietary uh, uh, version of the dice that you get to build. Which is so unique. Yeah. I've never seen something where you actually yep. put the dice together. It's like deck building, but dice building. Exactly, it's dice building. Um, and all of these, these are our manufacturing samples. They will have the icons on these, right? So we'll have the specific icons that you build your dice and push your push the uh, end game you're looking for. So every player gets a, a player board. You get to attack, defend, and power up. So attack is uh, attack and defend are pretty self-explanatory in this type of game, right? Power up is where you get new dice. You get to build your dice pool, and you get to add faces to your dice. So the first person to knock the other person to zero health wins. All right. Not only that though, but you have like some like 2v2 and all this other crazy oh, yeah, stuff yeah. you're like so, pumping in. Huh? So that, I, I explained the base game, right? Because yeah. we want to get you excited about the base game. But there's then, more. But then, there's, there's, more. then there's more. There's a lot more, right? So we did hit all the goals we wanted to for a uh, 1v2 game. So we have a, a mega villain, we're calling him, who is Sawmill Jackson. And that'll allow you to play 1v2, right? So Say Sawmill? Sawmill Jackson, right? Sawmill. So, okay. Sawmill, Sawmill. So yeah, he's a little it's bit a of a good bad guy. He's a little bit of a hybrid of a lumberjack, a tree, and a chain saw and an axe so he's he's uh, he's a little bit uh, difficult to deal with right I and, imagine so. <laughs> and you can take two uh, two heroes two super villains against him or even mix it up and take a hero and a villain against him really get that uh, that 1v2 play and then of course you can play 2v2 right so 2v2 allows you to each uh, you and your teammate uh, sit up next to each other and you actually share your dice pool and you can actually share powers during the game playing against the other team and it's uh, and it's player elimination so first last team standing wins it's a very simple game to learn how to play oh, yeah. but the intricacy is interesting because you're taking the dice and you're deciding what sides you want to add to them and how you want to utilize them you want to do defense you want to do attack or do you want to start using it for more power up abilities which will let you do more dice right. but i like the idea, idea of building and building and building until suddenly you hit them so hard they can't, they, do, they anything can't, they, they can't do anything about it they can't do anything about there's other strategies that could be good too, just uh, simply a mix of everything or yep. straight attack or straight defense. Yep, yep. And the characters all have their own unique aspects as That's well. Right, That's right, the characters. So there are three heroes and three villains that come in the box, right? So superheroes and supervillains. They actually add an extra board to the playable game. So you get your standard base game, but then you can actually pick one of these heroes and one of these villains, play, use them, and they all have their special Depending ability. How like in depth you want to get? Oh, well, right, exactly. And they all push the uh, game in different ways, right? So they have their own unique set of abilities and they're looking for specific dice or specific dice combinations that actually let them power up and do greater and greater attacks and defenses. So really pushes the game in a whole bunch of new ways. Our plan is to come out with more and more and more of these. We love these guys, so all about getting those balance right and making more of these uh, for the future. So we're really excited. Uh, manufacturing, I'm, I'm going back and forth with China right now. Uh, really, and you'll see you see the manufacturing samples coming back. These are some of those. Uh, we're really happy. We're online to deliver to our backers in November, and then we'll be in retail right after that. Awesome, beautiful. I love it. One last question before yeah. you go, because I know you're a busy man. Oh. What do you want to bring to the gaming community that's different than everybody else? What do I want to bring to the gaming community? I, I want. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> you put me on the spot. That is the tell, purpose of the one question at the end. Question beforehand. Oh, it's got to be nasty. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's all right. I, I will tell you that we are about building games that have uh, a little bit of conflict, but also the fact that there's some player interaction, right? I've got my daughter here, we love playing games together, and I like not doing a game where I'm just solving a puzzle by myself, but a game where we can play together, right? So that's why this is actually a, a 2v2 game, you know, a 1v1 game, and, and it's hard just so you can react and, and have fun with each other. And that's really what I want to bring to the gaming community. That's all that matters is having fun, right? Absolutely. Well, thank you once again for right, taking thanks. the time. Absolutely. Remember, Two Tongue Porcupine, if you're interested in checking out the game, it's going to be out pretty soon, I imagine. Absolutely. Where else can they go ahead and look up information for your game? Oh, yeah, so that is uh, Two Tongue Porcupine com or on Facebook, Two Ton Porcupine, and catch us either Google place. it up, probably uh, yeah, pretty yeah, easy, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right. That's most of you guys just have a good Google them, right? No, no fancy name, Two Ton Porcupine. We got it registered, so all, all good there. So just see, see us on any of those platforms. We are actually taking late backers, so if you're interested in getting in in the last minute, jump, jump in. in. All right, thank you for watching, and as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back to another Gen Con 2018 interview. I'm here with Ryan and we're talking about Quad Heroes from Wonderment Games. This is your first game, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, we've got some of the components and all that good stuff here. He's gonna tell us more about it, but I know a little bit about it and it looks amazing. Thanks. Uh, this is Quad Heroes. Uh, it's a pretty unique thing. We kickstarted quite a while ago, uh, a year and a half-ish ago. I've been following along because it yeah, looked good. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we were a little, little slow, but we just received our PPC from Panda, pre-production copy, so in just in time for, uh, for this. Okay. And um, yeah, so it is, I'm going to borrow my mini off the board since nobody needs it anymore. Uh, it's kind of an interesting game where you have a cube-shaped character and you assign a different action to each face of the character with a player board. And uh, there's like 28 scenarios in the rule book and you play uh, there's like a solo campaign, there's uh, player versus player, co-op, team games, all kinds of craziness. But uh, yeah, you, you tumble your character to choose your action into an adjacent space and then you move. Uh, some of them combo into other things, you're upgrading as the game goes on, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the... Sp it, it now, play, is it kind of like, like a uh, Crossmaster Arena? Is that kind of what it's like with the uh, uh, extra... Nothing at all. Nothing at all. No. Okay, so... In which way is it different from a fantasy, like, tactical RPG, then? So, this is more akin to, say, Robo Rally okay. meets Mario Kart. Meets... And that's because you can have, like, the mechanical movement, the, the, the preset movements. There are, it shares boards in common with Robo Rally in the sense that you're moving on a grid and you're trying to... Well, in Robo Rally, there's just a rally, right? We, have, we do have rallies. Uh, it doesn't work quite the same way because you're not programming. You're doing stuff, right? But uh, I would say board, it's not really equivalent to many board games. Uh, it's more equivalent to like a video game, like a, like a platformer. Take Super Mario Brothers and make it 3D and make it a board game. And that, a platformer like that one right there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it is, it, is, it is more akin to a platformer uh, video game than it is to any board game I can tell you about, really. Um, I mean, uniqueness is key, especially with interesting and new mechanics. The first thing that drew me was the fact that you can move the characters and how you move them and determine their actions and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really cool. I mean, it doesn't have a great feel, but like a fantasy, vibrant feel. Yeah. And so that's why it gives me that Crossmaster feel, just because of the yeah. thick vibrance of it and moving the 3D characters around. Yeah, totally. The, the funny thing is, I was at Essen like four years ago with early prototypes with my minis and stuff, and I was talking to the guys from Ankama. I, I think that's the guys who do Crossmaster. And they saw my stuff and went, wow, this looks amazing. It looks like similar to our stuff. And I was like flattered that they thought it was similar. I mean, it does have that same visual feel. The world is kind of rich and colorful and friendly looking. Um, the gameplay can be very friendly, but there's also a lot of player interaction that can be interesting. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it does have that. The world is built around that kind of, that chibi, sort of happy, friendly, bright colors kind of... Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, fantasy feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, where can they find out more about it? I know it's right now going to backers, right? That's the whole thing. We are shipping to backers. And at can the people end pick of... it up? No. no. You, you can you can still late pledge on backer kit. Okay. So if you go to the Quad Heroes uh, Kickstarter page, there's a you know late pledge button. That's going to be open for the next three weeks or so, and then we'll lock it down because we're going to be going into manufacturing this month as well, and we'll be shipping by the end of the year. Uh, with any luck, so awesome. Uh, one more question for you before you go. I know you're a busy man. Uh, what one thing do you want to contribute to the board and gaming community that's different than anybody else with your games? With my games, yeah. I, I think. I, I mean, everybody wants to be innovative, but I think for me that that's where I start. Like, I, I, if I come up with something that sounds like something else has been done before, I, I don't even consider it. Uh, and I like physical things, right? So. Um, I, I tend to come from from this space, where something that's physically different, rather than mechanically with cards or something. So, I, I don't know if that's a good answer, but my next game will be hopefully just as unique as this one. Oh, perfect. Uniqueness is very important in the gaming industry, and bringing those new mechanics to life is really, really cool because it shows that like the designers still have interesting things to bring to this world, and that just because you have these different little components that seem to be used over and over again doesn't mean you can't turn them into something unique. Yeah. Like Nictophobia is another one, closing your eyes, yeah, yeah. moving the pieces around that actually change the different actions yeah. in which the characters do. All these great little things. The game looks great. I'm really excited to see what it looks like. We'll keep following up with you, and thanks again for taking the time yeah, to, uh, so to show us about your game. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching and as always look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>
Gamers, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm here at the B B Game Studio with Frank Zanka, and uh, we're here show, showing off uh, Destiny Aurora Renegades. Uh, how's the con going for you, Frank? Uh, it's been going great. Uh, we sold out of everything. Our whole booth is <laughs> empty. Uh, so even we even brought uh, add-on figures, which are the brown figures, and they sold out in two hours. So. Wow, so this game must be really capturing the attention of people. Could you tell me a little bit about Destiny Aurora Regina yep. here's, Renegade? Here's my 30-second uh, pitch. So yeah. uh, this is the first game that has both space battle at the same time you're going to wait team mission on the planet's surface. So each player gets their own ship with their own crew, and each crew member is station-specific. So you have your engineer, you have your weapons person, you got your captain, etc. And it comes with 15 different missions and three different storylines. So you can play campaign or single mission. So you're telling a story. <coughs> so uh, when you land on the planet, so let's say this is my ship here, this planet would equal all of this. Okay. So let's say my ship lands and I need to hack one of the computers in here. So I'm gonna take my engineer with me. I'm gonna take my weapons person to protect him and then my ship is gonna take back off. Now I wanna shoot this guy Le here. Leaving them high and dry. <laughs> yeah, well, they need to go and protect the landing zone. So now this is gonna shoot this guy, except over here, you can see that there's no weapons person on the board anymore. Yeah. So now I have to move my commander into weapons. So now I'm gonna use his stats instead of hers. And it gets even worse if I put my medic in there. Damn it, I'm a doctor, not a gunner. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like there's a lot of miniatures. They look great, very detailed. Uh, how many miniatures are in the game? Uh, it comes with 24 minis, so it comes with four full crews that could be interchanged. It comes with four ships, and then it comes with uh, 22 tiles for land and 18 tiles for, uh, for the space side. So there's plenty of replayability. Nice. And then, uh, wait, how many players did you say it was? How long, uh, how long about? It's uh, one to four players. And uh, so use a whole solo side. Yeah. And if you're playing four players, that's where it's lots of fun because there's two different factions. <laughs> so it's two on two, so you're playing teams. So it's like, you go off and do this, and I'll go off and do that, you know, whispering everybody in the other ear. And it's lots uh, of fun. I love that. I love the communication aspect. That's a great skill to develop through games. Uh, so thank you for sharing Destiny Aurora Renegades. I have, and then, oh, if people want to still buy it, even though you sold out here, where, where should they go? Uh, you can go to Amazon, you can go to Miniature Market, or you can go to bnbstudios.com, and it's BNB. And then if you want to like us on Facebook, uh, it's Destiny Horizons uh, on Facebook, because that's my, my company. And it's also based on my book series and comic series that you can see behind me. Uh, the comic is on Comixology, and the novels are on Amazon, and the new, uh, the new novel's coming out uh, in two weeks. Awesome, so it really is a whole world, right? Oh, yeah, that, yeah, and it just keeps expanding and expanding, so all the characters I'm eventually going to have uh, in the novels. Awesome, well, thank you for sharing that, Frank. I just have one more question for you. Sure, sure. <laughs> so uh, what are you looking to bring to the board game community that's uh, unique to you? Uh, for, me, uh, for me, the uniqueness is creating the more stories and narrative uh, games. So the, so you can walk away going, remember when this happened, you still remember the game two weeks later? That's, uh, that's the kind of games I, I like to create and, uh, and play. Awesome, well thank you so much, Frank, thank for talking you. with us here at Unfiltered Gamer. We're at Gen Con, and thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con 2018. I'm here with Matt and John from ODM Publishing. We're going to talk about the game Shared Dream, or The Shared Dream, along with some other stuff that I haven't actually seen yet. I'm really excited to see this game. I saw it on Kickstarter. I supported it throughout the campaign because it looks great. All right, tell me what it's about. All right, very basic, right? You want me to take this one? Sure. You can give them the basic pitch. I'll give you the basic. Basically, everybody's playing the game in this cooperative. They wake up from a dream and they find out that that dream was a nightmare. And then they've got to take that dream that's following them into the real world and push it back out with all the cool dream stuff that we gamers identify with. Maybe I dream I'm a cyber cop, maybe the next guy dreams they're a superhero, whatever it may be. They're going to push that nightmare back out and save the day. That is awesome. And just from the looks of it, it looks amazing too. You know, I get this look at this beautiful game here. And all of these miniatures are included with the game as well? Yep, they're all included with the game. We have 10 playable characters with miniatures. 
20 miniatures in the base box. And uh, the cool thing is, like he said, since it's from Dreams, all the minis and all the designs are from different genres. So if you like sci-fi, we got something for you. If you got fantasy, we got something for you. If you like horror or modern fantasy, we got something for you too. So we have a little bit of something for everyone. And so because of that, you're, with this Dream State, you're able to use whatever you want, manipulate it, so the theme kind of comes out for everybody, right? Sure. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, uh, and you guys have expansions as well, too. Yeah, what, what? The backers did a really good job when we ran the campaign for it. So we have five scenarios in the base game. They're pretty robust and unique in their own right. But there were just parameters that couldn't be stretched any further for a base game. The box is heavy. It's got a lot of material. So all the expansions were cool things that the backers had wanted, but we just couldn't get into that box. So some of them needed a gigantic demonic miniature for their scenarios. So. That makes sense. I'd always want a gigantic Who want that demonic stuff? miniature in my games. <laughs> I mean, I, I back the others, so I mean... I like the style of miniatures. I like the demonic aspects. And then the dream, this is actually a very unique and interesting uh, theme, theme that I haven't seen really before in this kind of, it's kind of like a horror style almost, or like it's... Well, I think because of the context, because it's nightmares, there's always that element of horror, and I think that's that's part of the point. But it feels yeah. lucid too, like not just horror. Like, yeah, because I mean, we could all identify with dreams, you know? It, it makes a great medium. If you dream about being a hero, what's better than actually experiencing that dream when you sit down at the table, you know? So so it's something that people identify with very well. It makes the entry point easy. Oh, and I should mention, I think a big part of why the theme is so strong is the game's actually um, based off of our RPG of Dreams and Magic. So we have a full, you know, a full world already True. of characters and setting and theme. We were able to take all of that and transplant that to a board game. So maybe we were able to be a bit more theme and character heavy than something that came just on the onset of let's make a board game. So right. So what type of players do you think would be interested in this in this game? Well, it is cooperative, so you have to be interested in that. There are no scenarios that don't do uh, that do competitive stuff. Um, and they're going to identify with one of the two parts, one of them being the storytelling aspect. It's a very storytelling-driven game. Um, narratives, uh, theme in that aspect. So your typical, you know, time story type games and things like that. But also with the strategy and the resource management that comes uniquely with board games. So in that case, anyone that identifies with either component, resource management, tactics, they're going to like that part of it. People that like storytelling, they're going to love their their own personal story decks and all that jazz. So the game is already out, right? Yes. Is it under the backers now? Correct. This is the first show where we've had it. And now you've got it all showing out. Where do people go if they did not back the campaign or see it? Well, hopefully they come to the booth, but if they don't... You well, this ain't coming out until <laughs> afterward, because I'm taking a break, all right? All right. But they would come to odompublishing.com, and you can get everything right off there. You can learn about the game, watch playthrough videos, get any information that you might need to know, or just reach out to us and let us know what you think. And they would pick the game right up from our store, right off the website if they want. Beautiful. That's great. Any new uh, and interesting things coming in the future that you want to talk about? Things. A lot of interesting things. Matt, you want to tell them what's, what's brewing? Or should we tell, tell them what we got. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of stuff. I think we're waiting a little bit to announce it, but uh, there's going to be more shared dream stuff. There's going to be more stuff based off of the RPGs. The RPG line is going to be growing as well, so pretty much we have our fingers in a lot of pots. Yeah, so. We actually have a couple of people working on new RPG releases right now. I've been... Um, keeping up with them and making sure that they're on point while I'm here at Gen Con and we're taking care of this side of it. But they're real excited to just see growth on all of the different projects. We've got a card game coming up. We've got new RPG releases coming up. Um, and you may even have a new expansion coming up for the Shared Dream if it goes the way I plan it to. So Awesome. Well, I look forward to it all because it looks really cool. And when I was seeing this thing, I was like, wow. Like, this is your first game here, actually. Like, first, like board game style First thing, board right? Game here. right RPGs not RPGs, years, yes. But the board games are new, so, yeah. You did a really good job on it, so Thank that's, you that's awesome. Much. I appreciate it. Now, I got one more question for either or both of you. Sure. What do you guys want to bring to the board gaming hobby that's different than everybody else? Well, that's, that's a pretty tough thing to say, I would say, because yeah, the board game hobby is really robust. Like, important on yeah, but if you want to get real crazy, I, I just want people to be proud of what they've bought. I want people to buy something from us and feel like they're going to get a game that actually satisfies them and that they know what they're getting by the logo on the box. Never to feel like they're getting taken for a ride or a subpar material. Anything I could do to make sure that a gamer is always confident and always happy with something that we design and we publish, I'm going to do. And I hope above and beyond all things, that's what they get, you know? No, beautiful. And? Are you going to make me follow that up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, good luck, but go ahead. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I really agree. I think that we what we want to do is stuff that's really unique, special, and like he said, like the two things sort of like the Odom way that extends to how we run our Kickstarters, to how we interact with our customers, to the style and the feel that our games have. That way, when you see Odom Publishing, you know you're getting an Odom Publishing game, and so you know you should sort of know what to expect on a quality you know standpoint. Well done, both of you. I put you on the spot, and you did pretty good. Flying colors, A plus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right, guys. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching here. It's almost one of our last interviews here at Gen Con, so I'm thanking you guys for taking the time out. But uh, I look thank forward you. to uh, meeting with you guys and seeing the game and hopefully sharing it with you guys as well. And as always, see you guys next time.